Hello friends. Today I have some beautiful spring home decor DIYs. I hope they inspire you and I hope that you're having spring weather where you live. Here in Texas, we are having some pretty typical spring weather and I am loving it. Now, let's get to crafting. For this first DIY, we're going to use these little wooden letters I got at Joann's and I got them 40 or 50% off of this $6.99 so they were a very good buy and they're to make a banner um, we're going to use some cake batter and some farm fresh by DIY paint and I'm going to paint the little dragonfly with the cake batter and I just gave it one good coat and I did both of these dragonflies with the cake batter and look how beautiful they turned out now I'm going to do the letters that spell spring with the Farm Fresh. And I did two coats of the Farm Fresh on the letters. Now I'm going to use this IOD stamp. It's called something Barnwood. I believe it's called Barnwood. And I'm going to just ink it up with the IOD, IOD ink and just stamp it down across these letters and hope for the best pull it up and voila look how pretty that looks i absolutely love it fortunately i was able to do three letters at a time just re-ink trying to show you how i ink it but my camera span's not quite wide enough but i think you can get the idea of it you just ink it up now i have um, already primed my stamps with a little 220 grit sandpaper and then i'm going to do the same thing on the dragonflies now i get my iod my diy my salt wash i get all of those products from my friend sammy over at unicorndustdesigns.com you can go to that website i'll have it linked in my description box below and you can get all those products from her website and much, much more. She has some wonderful products over there. So go check her out. Look how pretty this looks. I'm in love with this. If you don't like that look, then you can just do whatever kind of distressing or design that you like on yours. I'm going to take a little... Um, sanding block and I'm just going to sand around the edges just a little bit and then I just gave it a little quick sand across the top just to take a little bit of that um, you know perfection off of it I like it to look a little bit rustic now I'm going to take clear wax by DIY with one of these little makeup brushes and give it a good coat of clear wax all of the pieces are going to get clear wax I love these little makeup brushes they're one of my favorite must have craft uh, essentials and in case you haven't heard when I get to 10,000 followers I'm gonna give away 10 of my must-have can't craft without supplies as a giveaway so stay tuned for that because we're getting very close so I'm just gonna do the clear wax on all of the letters and the dragonflies and when we're finished with that I'm gonna take this branch that I cut off of a bush in my yard and I'm gonna take some vintage linen and I'm just gonna dry brush a little bit just randomly all over it I don't really want it to look like snow but I want it to just have a little you know something on it that I don't really want it to look like bird poop either but it just gives it a little dimension and as it dries it dries a little lighter so you know it I think I like the way it turned out anyway. And then I'm going to just string the letters using the tw some twine. And I use a little bit of glue, uh, the um, tight bond quick and thick on the end of my twine and twist it. And it dries really quick and it makes it really easy. I don't have to mess with a piece of tape. Sometimes I do use a little piece of painter's tape or masking tape on the end to make it like a little needle but that makes it easy and then I'm going to just tie this I just kind of tie it loosely at first until I see exactly how I want it to hang and then I hold it up to make sure it's going to hang like I want it in the right the right length and then I just tie it um, around the, the ends of the letters so that they you know it'll hang right so I'm going to tie that how I like it and I'm showing you that I put that on there and twisted it around and then I'm going to tie the little dragonflies 
on the end of each at the end each end of this uh, branch I'm having a little hard time with my words doing this voiceover and so I'm going to twist a little glue on there um, and then I'm going to when I put that together I'm going to tie it in a little uh, just a little shoestring bow I kind of thought it looked like those were the dragonfly's eyeballs at first but when you put the, the twine through it 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 kind of takes away from that now, I thought I was going to just tie a string across the top to hang this because I've done quite a few projects like that, but having the spring hang down below, I did not like the way this looked at all. So instead, I just took the branch and I drilled a hole in the back of it, and I used that to, as a hanger, and I like the way that that turned out way better. So you'll have to let me know. Would you have left the twine hanger on top, or would you have hung it like this? Okay, next DIY. I picked these two precious little birds up at Joann's probably that same day. Um, nope, not Joann's. This is Hobby Lobby. I didn't pay that price. They were 40% off. And then I have this little hoop, hoop, metal hoop decor piece. I think I got these at an online auction. They were gold and I took them out and spray painted them I spray painted them previously, but didn't end up using them. So I had them kind of in my stash already spray painted. And when I put them in those um, little holes, they will come up to the top. That's what I was trying to tell you there. But I'm going to take a little dark wax by DIY. And I'm going to use this makeup brush. It comes in a set of five or six. I can't remember. And different sizes. And I love to apply my waxes with these brushes. They're also great for stenciling. I just, I love to have them in my, in my um, arsenal of brushes for crafting. So I'm just going to give this a good coat of the dark wax because the color it was just wasn't doing anything for me. And this is, uh, it's a wood piece, but it's almost a little bit like bamboo. Now I'm going to take cake batter and I've got a stenciling brush and I'm just, um, stippling a lot of this into the little nooks and crannies there because I want it to get down in there and then I want to wipe a little bit of it back. So I just kept doing that all over these little birds until I got it to look like I wanted it to. Now they're uh, kind of slick in nature so you know it didn't the paint didn't really stick really good but I wasn't really looking for that. I was looking more for like a kind of a kind of a dry brush kind of not I didn't really want a full coverage on this so I just wanted it, them to look kind of old and like the paint had kind of worn off a little bit and I'm going to take the petticoat pink and I'm going to stipple a little bit where the flowers are on the breasts of the of the birds and I don't really care if it's neat or messy I just because I want them to look like they're a little bit um kind of old I guess Or like maybe that, you know, a little bit of the paint has worn off. And then I do take a little bit of aviary. And one of them had a little leaf on it. And so I just dabbed a little bit of aviary on where the leaves are. And I think these little birds turned out really cute. I ended up um, giving them a coat of clear wax by DIY to seal our DIY paint because it is clay based and if you don't seal it then it can be removed um, you know with moisture so if you have some high humidity you know you could have some of your paint could come off so let's wax these little babies and look how cute they are I think they're just adorable so let's get back to our little platform here. So I'm going to just press those into the little openings that are provided. These came in a set. There were three in the box and I only gave like maybe five dollars for the three of them at this little on online auction site. And I'm going to use a twist tie to hold it together. I'm going to take a piece of this little ribbon that I'm going to make a bow out of and I'm just going to hot glue it around the top so that we don't see that little twist tie. And then I'm gonna make a real simple bow. 
I'm trying to figure out what size I want it. And then I'm just going to roll it around itself. It's just, just a super simple bow. I made the inside loop a little bit smaller than the outside one. And then I'm making them all about the same, you know, folded in half where they're about the same. And then I'm taking a piece of twine and gathering it up in the center, pinching it together so it's gathered in the center. And I'm just going to tie a knot hold, to hold that really tight. Now, I want some long tails because I want them to drape down the sides of our little centerpiece. And so that's about how long I want it. Find in the center, and I'm going to pinch it together, and then I'm going to tie it on the back side. Now, this was not a two-sided. You could kind of see through it, so, you know, but there is a front and a back, so I had to make sure that I had the front side with my bow. Now, I'm going to pull and twist and fluff it until it looks like I want it to. And then we will glue it on our centerpiece right on the top. Now, this part's going to be a little difficult to um, record because it's tall and it's right up in the face of my camera. But I'm going to take these little sprigs of greenery that I have no idea where I got these. I've had them in my stash. I don't know if I ordered them from Amazon or if I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um I, I, d I honestly just really don't remember where I got it, but I put a little piece on each side and then I'm going to put my little birds. I did hot glue them down a little bit, put a little bit of Spanish moss on there. And I, it's just such an adorable little spring centerpiece for my table. I put a little piece of lavender and a little bit of greenery around there and I just think it turned out adorable. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one. And then last but not least, I had picked up these little um, aluminum birdhouses from Dollar Tree some time ago. And I started painting one of them and decided I didn't want to that day. And so today I'm going to finish this project. So I'm just using my wire cutters on my needle nose pliers to take those um, little stands off. Now I'm going to use some beadboard and some salt wash. Salt wash is a paint additive that makes it thicker and will help you get texture. Now the difference in this and, and adding baking soda is that this is designed to work with paint so it's a little more stabilized. So I'm going to just pounce it on. My paint was a little bit thin because it had gotten really thick in my in my jar and I had watered it down a little bit some time ago so I could have added a little more salt wash to make it a little thicker but I really was kind of digging the way that it was looking on here so I just continued to apply the paint dab it on stipple it on um, and just get the look that I wanted and get the coverage that I wanted and I did not want to see any of that metal through so I just kept dabbing it, dabbing it, dabbing it until I got it, got it how I wanted it. So I'm going to have two white ones and then that, oh, that bigger one. Well, let's finish this one first. Okay. And I did it all the sides, the top, the back, because in this project piece, you are going to see the back side. So this one, I'm using faded burlap with salt wash and doing this exact same method. So getting up underneath those little eaves and just stippling it all on and giving it some texture. And you're going to see in just a bit what I'm going to do to bring out those little uh, flowers. But I did take those metal um, posts off of every all of the birdhouses. You can see that now. I'm going to dry them with my heat gun so that the paint gets all nice and dry and then I'm just going to take and dry brush that paint with the salt wash and over that and then you can see how the detail of that flower came out and I'm going to do it mostly around the edges and just you know give it a little secondary color on there and then same with the faded burlap I'm going to use the beadboard and do the same thing just so it gives it some dimension and a little extra color. And then I'm going to take some weathered wood by DIY as well. I'm going to dry brush 
it's just straight out of the straight out of the jar and i'm going to dry brush around the edges just giving it uh it's almost like i like this look because i feel like it almost outlines your piece so it gives it you know a place for your eye to stop and then i just did it a little bit on that flower but i did it a little heavier on the rooftop so that it um looked a little different now i'm going to give all three of these front sides back all of it a good coat of big top big top sealer to seal them now i, I have these three little birds that we're going to use french millinery and prom queen paint on now i poured these previously with some leftover resin that i had when i was I was anytime I pour and I have leftover resin, I just go ahead and pour it in a mold instead of wasting it. So that's how these little birds came about. And here's the mold that I used. It's an IOD mold, and these little birds are precious. And that lip makes it so easy to pour that resin in there. Now you can make them with clay if you want. I prefer resin. Um, I did buy a new kind of clay that I'm going to try that one of my sweet viewers uh, told me about. And stay tuned because I do intend to try that soon. So two blue and one French millinery. This is such a beautiful mauve, but when it dries, it's a it's a light mauve. It's so pretty. And of course I love prom queen because I love blue. It's my favorite color. I know everybody thinks purple's my favorite color because I have purple in my hair. I do love purple, but Blue is my favorite, every shade of blue. And so I'm going to um, coat them with clear wax first because I want to do a little white wax on them. But if you put clear first, you can wipe the, the white back a little more and it won't be as stark and as heavy. So it almost is like it waters it down a little bit, if you will. So here I'm going to put white wax. Now I have a brush that I use white wax for, I have a brush that I use clear wax for, and a brush that I use dark wax for. So I'm not using the same brush for all the waxes. So I'm trying to get the wax down in the crevices. And then I'm just going to take a little paper towel and just lightly brush over the top because I want that wax to stay down in there. And you're going to see this finished product and how pretty they look when you when you get finished doing this. It brings out all the detail. The IOD stamps are so full of detail. I don't know how those girls do it, the IOD sisters. But I have ordered other molds. I'm calling them stamps. Oh, my goodness. Okay, these are molds, not stamps. Um, but the stamps are very detailed, too. <laughs> but... I've used other molds and they're okay, but these are just far and above. But okay, I have this little block of wood I was going to use for another project. They were birdhouses as well, oddly enough. But my cousin had saved this for me from a project that she had at her house. And so I'm, we're going to use it for this one. Now I'm going to put these little birds over the holes. And the middle one had a really big hole. But not to worry, we're crafters. We can figure out how to fix that little problem. I'm going to take some Spanish moss and just fill the holes in and just put the birds over the holes. And I don't even know if I put, yeah, I did put Spanish moss on all of them. I sure did. So I'm just showing you, I'm just wadding it up and putting it over, putting some hot glue on there. And then I'm going to um, hot glue the birds to the house. One of them, I actually used some uh, tight bond quick and thick, but most of them I used hot glue. So I'm just going to put a big old wad of hot glue on this one because it had um, that Spanish moss it could adhere to. And this one had some Spanish moss it could adhere to as well at the bottom, at the bottom as well. Um, but it looks like I just put it right to the birdhouse. Okay. Okay, so I did use the, the tight bond on this one. And maybe I was experimenting. I don't know the rhyme or reason why I do anything. Okay, so here's here they are. Now I'm going to use the fix-all adhesive that I get at Dollar Tree. Love this stuff. It comes in a small little tube so, you know, it doesn't get all janky before you use it all like E6000 does. And I'm 
just positioning these to see where I want them to be positioned on this little block of wood. This is a really heavy, solid block of wood, and I think it just is beautiful, natural like that. But I'm going to put the the permanent glue on three sides and some hot glue on one side so the hot glue will hold quickly while the permanent glue sets up and then I can continue on with my work so that's how it's gonna look okay so I put all three birdhouses on with the glue same same thing for all three of them and look how cute but it just needed another little something something so I put this ribbon just made a little simple bow I got this ribbon and the ribbon that I used on the centerpiece at Sam's Club if you haven't checked out Sam's Club seasonal ribbon you are missing out right now for spring they have the most beautiful I just bought neutral ribbons but they have the most beautiful ribbons for Easter and they are like in my Sam's, I don't know if regionally they are different prices, but they're $7.98 for this huge roll. And I have some that I've had for about three or four years that I've been using. And it's like it just keeps giving and giving. Okay, here's the finished product. Let me know what you think about these adorable little birdhouses. And leave a comment down below. Leave me a emo bird emoji and let me know what you think about these cute little spring decor pieces. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you watching and commenting and supporting my channel. And stay tuned for when we hit that 10,000 subscriber count. That's it for this video. I hope that you're inspired to make some beautiful spring decor with some birds or birdhouses or whatever you like for spring. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed. Hit that bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video, which is typically on Sundays. But sometimes I am a part of some collabs and I post on different days. I usually will put that in my community tab if I do that. But most of all, I want you to remember to be still and know that He is God.